Uh, hello, this is an example of a, a problem, uh, an example of working one of the problems in our radar course. This would be a radar quiz 603 and a handful of questions uh, generally related to relative motion diagram analysis. And um, so, and that problem gives you simply this screen, which is captured from the radar trainer with three targets, three converging targets. And then our, our question is then on these, uh, what are um, closest point of approach? What, are, uh, the, um, what will the clock read at CPA, the speed of relative motion? True course and true speed. Remember, we're going this direction. Well, this is heads head up radar, right? Heads up. So we're headed uh, whatever direction. It doesn't matter because this is relative heads up, and these are the targets coming in on the on the starboard side and on the port side, and um, so uh, and our speed is seven knots, and so we want to know the. Um, uh, all about these targets and how they're going to interact with us and in the end we want to know what lights we would see this this one for you know you, it looks like well I don't know what you'd what you'd guess here we have to you know guess this uh, but you often guess wrong with uh, with the radar with relative motion and so we want to sort out how you figure out exactly what lights you should see and then there's another thing that's implicit here and that's the way uh, most radars are set up to give this option. Uh, these are this is a plot that's lasted for a duration of uh, six minutes, and uh, almost all radars will give you the option of making trail lengths of six minutes or twelve minutes or three minutes, some multiple of that. Here we have one mark every ninety seconds, so there's one. I mean one, two, three, four times. 9360 so this is this is six minutes so this six minutes ago this target C was right here target B was here and so forth and then every 90 seconds that's their trail and so it's fundamental in radar that you turn on these trails so you can see what things are doing you can't just look at them without the trails then you have no idea what's going on so it's fundamental you turn the trails on and ideally you set them so that they make a trail length segment that's six minutes long and the reason that is true is because in six minutes the distance that you move is simply one tenth of your boat speed. So in this case, this uh, this uh, we're, our boat is a, our vessel here going seven knots. So if there were a buoy that's just not moving at all in this in the real world, it would be going. Uh, it would just move straight down the screen like that, and it would be in in six minutes. It would be 0.7 miles long. And that's the way we analyze what's going on. We just assume each of these targets started out going past the buoy. And so that's what we do. And so we have this line. Okay, let me, uh, so this is what the problem is. Let me uh, zoom this up. Let's see, can we handle that? Uh, maybe I can go bigger. Let's see. Well, that's about as big as I could go. Yeah. Now you do uh, normally you would do this right on the radar. You could do it right on the radar screen. There's all sorts of tools on a radar to do this right on a radar screen, or you could uh, you could copy the data. You could take a variable range marker and uh, take this and and take this. You know, six minutes later is this, or sometimes what you would do is just go in here and put a dot a dot. You know, you you see a target. Put a just grab a visa V marker and put a dot on that radar and mark the time. Mark the, ideally do it right at an even minute, and mark the time 1206.00 1206 and you put a dot right on it, and then six minutes later you come back and make another dot. That's if you don't have a nice trail on your radar or you just want to do it that way. Uh, but we need to know how far and in what direction did each of these targets move in six minutes. Or you could do it by 12 minutes and, you know, divide by two. Or three minutes and multiply by two. But that, the basic is at six minutes. So let me see what I have here. Do I have that yellow line? Here's a, here's a line. Now I want this to be, and then you see, what do we got going on the scale here on the range rings? 
we have a range of six miles and range rings of one mile each. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six miles. So we want what we need. What we need to work with our workhorse in doing this analysis is a line. Well, let me do. I'm going to need that again. Command C, Command V. Uh, I'm going to need a line that is 0.7 miles long. And so here we've just introduced tick marks. Here, you know, different radars do this in different ways, but we have just tick marks here. So I can just put this put this line here, maybe get it there. Now I just need to bring this in. Oh, that's not bringing it in. What I got to get the right button here. Okay, so let me. Uh, so this would be two, four, six, eight, seven would be about there. Let's see what that looks like. Does that look about right? Now you would be doing this with dividers if you're on a plotting on a plotting sheet. You would be doing it with dividers, but I just want to illustrate. So you'd put your you'd put your uh, dividers on point seven and then just draw this line. So what we do now is we just bring this up here and we want to and then I want to rotate that. So uh, let me just uh, okay. So here is the trail that if this if this guy went right by a buoy right here, right. So he was. Let's say that six minutes ago there was this this vessel C was right next to this buoy, right. So then he moved on like this, and the buoy moved like this simply because that's what we did, and that's how we're unfolding we're unfolding the relative motion of it. So the real motion of this target relative to the true land, which is the buoy, is this line from here to here. And so we could take this, let's see, command C, command V, okay. Let me take this over, put it here, uh, maybe here, can I do this? Yeah. Oh, okay, here. So there, um, there you see, well, let's see. That should go up a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I gotta get it right there. And then enter. Okay, cancel. I don't want that. Okay, here. Now I I just want to get. Oh, I'm not doing that right. I want to get that guy right up on this. Uh, okay, that's a little better. Okay, well that's about the same. All right. So here's the seven. Here's the zero point seven miles on this scale. Point seven miles at a that a buoy trail would have made and then here then is that actually what this vessel did relative to that buoy when that buoy is fixed in land so this is this speed this direction down here this direction here is called the direction of relative motion we probably want to look that up too but no, normally you can kind of see that I mean but the crucial thing the, the question is going to ask for that as well but right now I want to get to the harder one the true motion and this is the true speed of the vessel even though it looks like it's closing in on you a lot faster than that so this then let me just see here I can then just maybe I can just bring this down to our scale it's bigger than that so I'm just going to put it here and see if I can rotate that up well it's almost parallel let me go up here okay so it looks like it's about 1.2 so that's 1.2 miles so the uh, that vessel's true speed now that's in six minutes 1.2 miles so its true speed is 12 10 times that, 12 miles an hour. So if someone asks you, how fast is this vessel going? You would say it's a 12 miles, a 12 knots. Now, on the other hand, if you, um, if you just uh, ask for how fast is it going down the radar screen, that would be, that would be this. Um, let me see here. I can do this right. Okay, that's this speed right from here to here that's the relative motion that's the relative motion of that target and uh, that would be can I move him yeah so oh, okay so let me get get rid of that guy and then this is so much easier when you're dealing with uh, you know pair I mean just dividers <laughs> you know just plain dividers I've got to screw around here uh, okay so what do we got here something like that so that's like uh, 1.2, 0.4, 0. 0.6. I get like 16, and I don't know how. 
careful I did that but you have to be more careful and again if you're doing this with paper with a chart I mean if you just you just print this out just print this and in your quiz just print that out and um, then you can measure it more accurately so we've got that uh, now um, let's see so we know how we know how f the relative speed was about 16 maybe a little more than that the uh, the actual true speed we figured was about uh, what did we figure 12 knots now we need to know what's the true direction of the vessel let me just take this line again and uh, put that up here and let's see if I can do that um, nope I gotta get that yeah okay so that's like that but now I need to make that longer so I can project it across okay so that's the direction that's then the direction of the of the actual vessel that's its true direction if someone what what course was it steering and then so I can go up here now and take this and put it on here and that's 90 100 Oh, wait a minute, 90, 100, 110, 120, 125 degrees true. Okay, so this vessel, even though here's what it looks like on the screen, it's actual, it's actual, um, actual direction that it's steering across the chart is uh, one, 125 degrees. Okay, so here's this again. Now, the other thing that we might want to see is what would be the color of the lights that we would see here. And so we're looking at, so you could almost draw your boat this way. You know, you're, you could draw a little boat on here. The boat's pointing this way. The boat is not pointing that way. The boat's pointing this way. And you see when we're here looking up at that, that would definitely be a green light. You'd see a green light. Now, in a case like this one over here, let's just look at D real quick. You know, D, it looks like you're head on. See, here's a case where you got to really think about it. Number D here, for example, it literally looks like it's coming right, right straight at you. So you could shoot from the hip and say, the lights I see from D are red and green. Red and green, head on, red and green. That wouldn't be right at all. See, you can take your, take your seven over here, right, and then take this guy. I'm not working number D, but, well, oh, look at that. Huh, it's interesting. Okay, D is, uh, D is headed right straight across you. Its course is 270. Now, um, so you're going to not see red and green at all. You're going to see a red light. Okay, I've worked, I didn't want to work that one. But anyway, so you see how that goes. But that's why it's so important to understand the, 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 the right lights that you would predict. In fact, in some cases, you could be overtaking a vessel. You could be overtaking a vessel. And it's going to, when you're overtaking it, it's going to be tracking. It's, it's lights are going to, I mean, it's relative motion like that. It's track is going to come down here because it's, you're overtaking it. It's getting closer. So it's tracks coming down this way. And you could shoot from the hip again and say, I'm seeing red and green, or I'm seeing green, or I'm seeing red. Well, when you do the analysis, you'll see none of that's true at all. I'm actually seeing a white light. I'm overtaking the guy. So this, uh, the idea of figuring out the, uh, what lights you should see is a fundamental uh, to radar reading. And then you have to just remember the basics of how lights, uh, what the rules are on the lights, that the, um, that the uh, red and green light are seen, f uh, I mean, uh, the side lights, let's say the red light on, or the green light on this side of the boat. Well, uh, let me get a boat out here. Okay. So here's a boat. So I'm going to see green from, um, well, red and green, are, you see red and green from about maybe three degrees. If they really were obeying the law, they wouldn't cross over more than three or four degrees dead ahead. So in this cone out here, maybe three or four degrees wide, you can see red and green. But as soon as you get more than like five degrees off to the side here, this should be a green light. And the green is all the way here back to two, uh, two points after the beam, 22 and a half degrees after the beam. So that would be back down here. And then that whole angle back here 
um, th this whole range back here is white. I should have pulled out a fixture with lights, but I wasn't going to get into that. But, but it's, it's important to go in and look at the navigation rules about what lights are seen. To answer these questions, you can't just draw these pictures. You also have to know the navigation rules on what, on what the lights are. So um, the, uh, what else do we have? Also, it asks for like the, let me just come back to this one. Um, now, the, okay, can I do that? No, I have, I'm not that controlled over this program I'm using. I want to rotate this. Oh, okay, there you go. So you get something like the CPA. The CPA, see this, this is the relative motion. This is the way this target's going to track right across that radar screen. Right, right across that radar screen. So sometimes, sometimes questions you might want to ask, uh, or the, you, the 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 helmsman might ask the radar operator or something. How f how close is this guy going to be when he passes in front of us? That would be this distance right here, right? That would be this distance. Then you could ask uh, uh, how what's his closest point of approach, and. Um, that would be this distance. Now, I can't read it exactly, but, you know, something like one and a half miles, like that. And you could ask, what would be his bearing? What would be his bearing when he went past you at your closest point? And his bearing would be like, like for, you know, 45 degrees on the on on starboard bow, broad on, uh, starboard bow, 45 degrees, is when he's going to be his closest so when you're looking out the window, that's, then you know that. So, so that's the closest point of approach. That's that distance right in here, which we read from the relative motion diagram. We read it off here. And then uh, how far across in front is here, and that's the number of miles and so forth. Then you can figure the times. See, once you know this speed of relative motion, we got that 16 or 17 miles per uh, knots, then you can start saying, when's he going to cross over? Well, you measure this distance here. He's going, here's where he is at this time, which was clock, clock running for six minutes. Here, here's where he is right now. At this picture, you're going to say, when's he going to cross our bow? He's going to cross our bow this many miles at his speed of relative motion. Speed of relative motion is uh, then you take the speed of relative motion and you divide it by that distance and you get the time. Likewise, if you do the, dis you do the calculate when's his closest point of approach, that's going to be this speed of relative motion and this distance all the way down to here. So that's the, sort of the guidelines for working this problem and others like it. It's a fundamental uh, as fundamental part of radar observing. It's a, using the relative motion diagram. The trick play is always you think of the target. You, you track him for six minutes or 12 minutes, six minutes. And then in six minutes, you know you don't have to compute anything. You know the length of this line here. You pretend he's going by a buoy. The length of this line is simply your boat speed divided by 10. And then from the tip of that to here, that shows his speed or course made good, in a sense his course made good relative to that. And that's the, that's the true direction and the length of that's the true speed. Okay, I'm going to stop there.